Okay, welcome back into the Parker and the Man page at yournews.com. I'm Mark Wilson with your webcam, and uh, it's been about, what, a week and a half since we talked last, um, since we hooked up the last time. Uh, been out west doing some biz, most of the time in Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas was great, thank you very much. Very hot out there, about 110, 115 degrees, and I come back here, and it's like wintertime. I'm wearing a hoodie back here. What's that about? I could take it off and show you the good tan. No, I won't do that. Um, but still, I mean, I know summer's coming back a little bit, but who took summer? Who stole summer? Bring it back. Uh, a, little, a little chilly out here. But still, um, I brought back some nuggets from Las Vegas, including, I don't mean the golden nugget, but uh, including Pete Rose. I didn't physically bring you know Pete back, but uh, out there at the forum shops at Caesars Palace, um, there's a Field of Dreams store, and there's a sign, big sign that says, Meet Pete Rose here today. And you can read all about this in my column. Uh, uh, this is happens to be today, the 24th of August, the 20th anniversary exactly of the day that Pete Rose signed the decree that banned him from baseball for life. He signed it voluntarily. Uh, of course, he did spend time in jail for tax evasion, but uh, this was his punishment for ga gambling on the game. And I know it was out of focus for Pete then, and it's out of focus still for him now because he's still a little delusional, if you will. And some like Mike Schmidt and Hank Aaron starting to lobby a little bit for Pete to be reinstated. A lot of it has to do with the current steroid situation. Do not confuse the two people. Pete Rose needs to stay banned. And Bud Seeley, the commissioner of baseball, got a little dose of religion when he was actually starting to think about maybe allowing the idea that Pete Rose could be reinstated to the game. It can't happen. And then he said no. He shut that down for the time being again. But Pete Rose should never be allowed back into baseball. And there's a good reason for that. Just like there's a good reason for me to be out of focus there. Uh, and that is because in every clubhouse in baseball, there used to be a placard. I don't know if they're up anymore. I don't see them as much. But it used to read, it was a big sign that said, if you gamble on the game, you will be banned for life. It didn't say that about cocaine or marijuana or steroids. It said it about gambling. And Pete Rose did it. And it took him about 15 years to come clean that he did it. And there's a lot of reasons why Pete Rose needs to stay. And why Pete Rose is still kind of a schnook over it. So read all about that in my column today. In the return column on yournews.com. Also, there's a bit about anniversaries. The nines seem to be a time for anniversaries, going all the way back to the uh, Black Sox scandal, the 90th anniversary of that, the famous uh, World Series that was thrown by the Chicago White Sox, called the Black Sox, all the way to the baseball strike, 1994, 15 years ago. Tigers World Series, 25 years ago, 1984. Famous 84 team here in Detroit. Uh, so check that out. There's some other, you know, interesting anniversaries uh, this year. Um, and you all know about Man on the Moon, Depression, all that stuff has an anniversary date attached to uh, something ending on the nines. John Smoltz, how about Johnny, huh? He's dumped by the Boston Red Sox after leaving Atlanta, third team in a year, in the calendar year, and he was terrific against uh, the San Diego Padres. He, uh, his debut at the Cardinals, he went five innings, struck out nine, seven in a row, one point. Looks like he is back, the Lansing Waverly product, Johnny Smoltz, at the age of 42. Uh, looking good in his debut for the uh, Cardinals and Tony La Russa. So you can read about that. Also, the AP preseason college football poll is out. Florida, number one, got the most percentage of votes first place ever in the history of the preseason college football poll. And who would have thunk ever that the Central Michigan University Chippewas, CMU, would ever get more votes in a preseason poll than Michigan? Michigan got none. CMU got seven. So uh, read about that as well. Uh, and where Michigan State lies in there, where the top Big Ten teams, uh, the AP preseason football polls out, meaning we're this close now, that close to the start of the college football season, September 5 for uh, Michigan and Michigan State's when they begin. Uh, Rich Rodriguez came out at Michigan Media Day, which was yesterday, which was Sunday, uh, talking about using three quarterbacks in the opening game against Western Michigan. Three quarterbacks, that's three. It's Tate Forcier, the freshman, for Cedar, if you will, uh, depending on how you want to pronounce it, uh, Denard Robinson, the other freshman from uh, Florida, and uh, the incumbent returning junior, uh, Nick Sheridan. Uh, let me tell you when three quarterback systems work. Never. Probably go out of focus again now. Uh, Bo Schembeck would try a two-quarterback system back in 1987, and last I remember, Michael Taylor and Demetrius Brown were tossing seven interceptions against Michigan State at Spartan Stadium. Doesn't work well. Usually never does. Teams don't win much with two or even, or certainly with three or two quarterbacks uh, playing at you know various times. Here's what's the problem: cadence is different. 
These are college guys. They have to get used to a different guy under center. It just doesn't work well. Running backs have to get used to how a quarterback hands off. Offensive lines have to get used to those cadences, the call of the play, you know, hut, hut, hike, 382, 382 blue, that kind of thing. So it just doesn't work well. So you can read about that, too. And the Lions lost at Cleveland. Awful. <laughs> I mean, terrible. Special teams, offense, defense, Matthew Stafford, terrible. <laughs> the whole thing. And here come the Indianapolis Colts on Saturday in the Ford Field. You think Peyton Manning doesn't hope, wish that was a regular season game? playing the Lions this Saturday. So I always say, now, forget the preseason. We saw 4-0 preseason last year, and then they went a cotton-picking game last year. So 4-0 preseason meant nothing for the regular season. So I'm not making a big deal about it, but if you're looking at the way a team is, just two games before the season starts, awful. Couldn't have been worse. And Jim Schwartz knows it. He knows there's a long way to go before he gets this thing right. So check it all out. Pete Rose. Other anniversaries in the nines, when you end on the nines in a year, Johnny Smoltz's great effort for the St. Louis Cardinals in his debut a preseason college football poll, Rich Rodriguez and the quarterback situation at Michigan, the Lions loss at Cleveland, and uh, Vegas, baby. It's Vegas, baby. What happens in Vegas comes to yournews.com, as it turns out. So check it all out early and often. And um, email us on tvboy at yournewsdetroit.com. Rob Parker, rob at yournewsdetroit.com. Happy navigating. Welcome to a new week.